Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are officially planting mushrooms. So the company that sent me this is called My Fungi and we were initially going to work together this entire summer um, to give you guys kind of like a whole series about mushrooms and mushroom growing in your yard but it didn't work out they didn't have enough stock levels to supply the potential demand that you know an entire series or a group of videos would be able to give so um, without with that being said i'm not getting any kickback for this however i do not mind helping out a canadian company especially a small family owned and operated one so be sure to check out this group on instagram they've got really funny memes actually i enjoy their posts their content um, and then they also have the products as well so i'm going to be doing blue oysters in my garden and i'm not going to get into too much of the science of growing fungi the benefits of growing mushrooms in your garden but what i will tell you is that if you have a shade garden or if you have a full shade area in your yard whether that be on the lawn or on bare soil and you are sick of hostas then mushrooms is your next best choice so very unique looking little critter to be in your garden there's huge benefits to your soil and to your surrounding plants and just the whole microbiota of your backyard ecosystem but they're also delicious i mean bobby absolutely loves mushrooms i love mushrooms um, and there's lots of health benefits to mushrooms as well so we are going to plant this in a full shade area behind this big bad boy tree behind me one kit will cover 10 feet uh, area we're gonna do less than 10 feet so I'm expecting a very high concentration in mushrooms now with that being said it is incredibly hot right now in Western Canada so I'm hoping this doesn't fail uh, fungi like not only low light high moisture but also lower temperatures they don't like extreme temps and unfortunately 40 degrees Celsius 35 degrees Celsius is counterintuitive to growing mushrooms so we'll see what happens um, if it turns out great if it doesn't there's zero fault of my fungi this is the wrong time of year to be doing this but I am just I'm so excited the other thing to mention too is that if you left this here my theory would be if the fungi is engineered or um, made in a way to survive a canadian winter like the spores are you would have this mushroom growing in your backyard year after year so it would actually act as a perennial so something to keep in mind when you're choosing what mushrooms you want to grow outside in the yard you may want to select a variety that comes back year after year but anyways go give these guys a follow on instagram check out their website if you do want to grab some mushrooms they are still available but they did mention that there is limited quantities so if you get there and they're sold out don't feel too bad about it um they will have some more very very soon but Without further ado, let's get this stuff planted. So really fun fact about this company is that there's zero waste. So we're actually using the box everything came in, uh, plus all the products that came with it. So the only real waste product is the actual plastic bags it comes in. But quite honestly, how are you gonna get around that? I mean, we're talking about live living organisms here and we can't really just throw it in cardboard. It will just soak through and make an absolute mess. But so ground prep, when it comes to ground prep, we want to remove any sticks, twigs, mulch, leaves, grass, mulch of any form. Um, and it has to be placed either directly on the soil, preferably, or the lawn. So keep that in mind. I cleared this out as uh, much as humanly possible. And uh, let's get started with breaking down the cardboard box and putting it in place. I'm sure a lot of you already know the obvious when it comes to the cardboard box. The purpose of it is to eliminate weed competition and um, kind of like a no dig system. So another thing the cardboard is going to do is it's going to be a great interface for moisture sequestration. It's going to act kind of as a, a bit of a battery pack to kind of hold some of that extra moisture in, which is overall going to help with uh, the fruiting body growth of the mushroom itself. My fungi has a really nice system. It's all nicely numbered, which is pretty awesome. So bags one and two are identical product. I would, I think they're probably cedar 
shavings, maybe pine shavings, um, judging from the smell anyways. So one and two are the same, and then four and five are also identical. So we're going to place this down. It asks for approximately two inches uh, thickness. Now, again, I'm doing much smaller surface area than 10 feet, but nonetheless, uh, it, I'm going to do two inches or close to two inches uh, over the entire space that I am doing. I know one of the questions I'm going to get right off the hop is, should you not be watering in between each layer? And while you most definitely can, I quite honestly don't think you're going to benefit hugely from layering or watering um, each layer. And so I'm just going to water after I put my spores down in this next step. Okay, so we are going to break this up and place half of what is called spawn onto the initial first layer we did with Pet Franck giving uh, a good quality control inspection. My fungi, Pet Franck says it's good. To be quite honest, I was really surprised by the texture of this. I did not realize that for fungal uh, gardening or mushroom gardening that you used a seed um, based method. So it looks like a long grain barley or something. I'm not entirely sure what's in there. Um, but it's seed and then it is encapsulated kind of in this white coating. But the most important part about this is obviously an even spread, but also getting rid of all the clumps. So you can see as I'm dropping them, some, I am dropping some clumps as I'm doing this, but after I do go through and I do still break up all those little uh, individual clumps that ended up falling out of my hand. Note this action here, this rolling hand action. That seemed to be the most effective in actually breaking up those clumps into smaller pieces. It was quick, it was easy. If it was on the Olympic stage, I mean, I definitely think it'd be 10 points out of 10 on, on the scale for a mushroom planting performance, in my personal opinion. But uh, all joking aside, you do want to break up these clumps because otherwise you're just going to end up with a mass of mushrooms and it's over competition and you're not going to spread out your mycelium. This is now step two. I'm applying a, another layer of uh, that same kind of wood chippy type really thin pine shaving something similar actually to what you would see in a like a bunny rabbit cage type thing if that makes sense so uh layer this out again they're asking for two inches i'm doing less than you know 10 feet area so i it may be a little bit thicker than what they advised but pretty darn close this is when we begin the official uh, watering process so I did this for probably 15 minutes. It absolutely soaked this entire area. You don't want running water, so you don't want runoff and erosion that's going to displace the pores and uh, the spores, the pores, the spores, and then the actual uh, top covering. But you definitely want enough moisture that it is wet. So now we have it completely soaked, and we're going to do the second half of this beautiful loaf looking thing and uh, get that spread out also i should also note it doesn't smell i thought it would be really stinky but it's not stinky it just smells really fresh so no clumps same idea evenly spread throughout the entire uh, space hello again okay so the three was upside down but i was super uh, positive about it i definitely owned it in that uh, footage there so anyways this is a different type of wood shaving but is a shaving nonetheless so it's even thinner than the first two layers we put down and uh, smells absolutely wonderful so now we are on step four and five these are the identical bags similar to what steps one and two are these are obviously closer to your true wood chips, very similar to what you would use for a mulch, is a decorative kind of uh, painted mulch, but this is completely natural and naturally colored. So you just scatter this over again, evenly as possible. If you wanted to, you could add a, a little bit extra if you had some, but quite honestly, the bags were very per perfectly portioned for the space and the volume of uh, spawn that they gave you so it worked out very wonderfully okay so i am officially completed i'm just letting it soak a little bit more with water i may even run the sprinklers here for a little bit probably 30 to 45 minutes 
to water mostly my garden but also to really make sure that this is thoroughly soaked i really need that humidity nice and high now typically if you're doing this in the spring or the fall you wouldn't need the humidity that high because you would just lay this lovely little cover that they send um, with the package on the top of the soil however it is currently 40 degrees celsius in the high midday and in the shade even it's getting over 30 so i don't want to risk putting this on top and just totally baking my fungal spores now i know they're very tough uh, little critters in soil microbes with mycelium but I don't want to risk it so I'm going to pass on the very very lovely plastic that they send with you and if it is spring fall for sure use this but we are midsummer middle of July it is hot 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 out there folks so I want to try to avoid it as much as possible now um, if it gets cooler I will definitely put this on but I am going to try my very very best to keep the moisture up in here completely saturated every day, all day, day and night. So that may involve two, three times of watering. I'm not sure. Keep in mind, we aren't, you know, it's not super um, hot where this is because it's in full shade. So I'm not too, too worried about it. I may try this and put a thermometer underneath and see what the temperature reaches, but I'm not holding my breath. I'm expecting a long, tedious haul, mostly because this is the time of year I'm starting it. But if you started in spring, you wouldn't have this issue. I'm just not that organized, so what can I say? Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will be sure to post photos, videos of this either on the next plant tour or uh, on my actual Instagram. I will post photos for sure there or on the Facebook group. Like I said, be sure to go follow my fungi and uh, order your kit while they last. Not supposed to last very long, not until next year, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!